fiery horse with the speed of light, a clot of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I am Silver. Hi! Joshua Biddle was one of the first photographers to go into the West. He and his daughter Flo traveled and lived in a great closed wagon that had once been a circus wagon. They were friends of the Lone Ranger, and it was the masked man's recommendation that brought the photographer a special assignment from officials high in the government at Washington. Biddle and his daughter were on the high seat of their wagon when the Lone Ranger had ridden up to talk to them. Between now and the time you report to Captain Arnold, don't tell anyone about your mission to make pictures of the United States defenses on the West Coast. No, sirree, not a word to anyone. And you'd better destroy that letter from Washington. Very well, sir. Flo, I gave it to you. Where is it? I've lost it. What? Oh, Dad, I'm sorry. When you first saw this masked man coming, you startled me. I dropped the letter when I reached for the rifle and it blew out of the wagon. The letter was picked up by a sudden gust of wind. It traveled far across the rolling country, then over the edge of a ravine and fluttered to the ground. Several hours later, two men made their camp on the floor of the canyon. They prepared a meal within a few yards of the letter from Washington. Both men had swarthy complexions and black hair. For the life of me, I cannot find a piece of paper. Almost anything will do, Ricardo. Oh, perhaps you can remember the name of an address of my friend. No, no, Juan. I do not trust my memory. I will find something on which to write. Uh, look. <laughs> the answer to my needs. Now that piece of paper over there. I will get it. You will like my friends Gonzalez and his sister. They will pay you well if you are not too particular what you do. Murder? Is that what your friends will want of me? They will tell you what they want of you. The fact that you have lived so long in the States and have served as a member of the United States Army will make you more valuable to Gonzalez. Mm. Now, give me that paper. I will write down the address. Oh, it is very strange. What is strange? This paper. It is a letter from Washington. From Washington? See, si. Addressed to a man named Biddle. Joshua Biddle. Juan, this letter may be of great importance. Let me see it. You said your friend Gonzalez and his sister were seeking information about the United States, the activities of the Army and the Marines, as well as the Navy on the Pacific Coast. Oh, Ricardo, this man named Biddle... He's to go to the coast to make photographs. Madre mia. Jose Gonzalez must know of this at once. You were going to tell me where to find Gonzalez. Tell you? <laughs> With this letter, Ricardo, I will take you there. 
We must both go and see Jose Gonzalez as quickly as possible. It was the following day when Ricardo and Juan reached a tavern at the top of a long, gradual hill. Oh, 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 oh. As they dismounted from their tired horses, an attractive girl came out to meet them. This is the place you call Hilltop House? Oh, it is Juan del Rego. <laughs> oh, Anita. I am so glad to see you. Glad to see you. Oh, my brother, too, will be glad. Del Rego. Is it really you? <laughs> Jose. Oh, my friend, you must know Ricardo, who might become most helpful to you in... Uh, in your uh, special work. Senor. Oh, se va? Jose, we have something of particular importance for you. Uh, let us go inside. Uh, we must talk most privately. Inside, there will probably be guests and servants. No, there's no one here but my sister and me. See, we are alone in Hilltop House. I thought this was a tavern. It is a tavern, senor. We own it, you see. When travelers wish to stop here, we accommodate them. But at the present time, we are alone. Ricardo, what is it you have that is so important? Come inside and tell us about it. Seated around a table in the tavern, Juan showed his friends the letter addressed to Joshua Biddle and explained how he and Ricardo had found it. See, it is most interesting. So, this photographer is to make pictures on the Pacific coast. Pictures of the United States Army and the Marines and the defenses... Jose, if we could only get those pictures, they would be of extreme importance. We must get those pictures. If there's any way Ricardo and I can be of service. Uh, where is this photographer named Bill? I thought you might ask that question, Jose. So before I came here, I investigated. Well, no. Bill is east of here at a place called Pineville. He'll be there for several days before he starts for the Pacific coast. Will he travel by this trail? He's very likely. He travels in a big wagon. There's a girl with him, his daughter named Flo. Hmm. Juan, we must arrange so that Senor Beetle will stop here in the hilltop house. I shall take his place as photographer. My sister will become the girl named Flo. A wide valley stretched westward from the hilltop house. There was another gentle hill beyond the valley, and beyond that hill, an army garrison had been established to keep Indians in the vicinity from getting out of hand. Colonel Nelson, who commanded the post, had a grim-faced man in his office. The visitor wore civilian clothes, but he had the carriage and the military manner of a soldier. His name was Broderick, and he was a United States Marine. I've heard about you, Broderick. I've heard a great deal about you. And I'm proud to be chosen as the officer to instruct you on your next assignment. And you know what my next move is to be, eh, huh, Colonel? Yes. Will I get back into uniform? No. No? Oh, now, see here, Colonel. I've just finished traveling the length and breadth of Mexico in plain clothes as an undercover man. I finished that assignment... Roderick, that speech is unbecoming a soldier. That speech was milk and honey. If I don't go back into uniform, I'll cut loose of some speech that'll curdle the air. <laughs> I can understand how you feel, Brody. I want to get back to my friends on the Pacific coast. Well, cheer up, Rodney. You're going to California. Well, that'll help. The government is charting our Pacific defenses and making topographical surveys. It is also having a photograph record made. Photographs? Yes. A photographer named Biddle is on his way to California. He'll pass his way. You are to meet him, travel with him, and give him instructions. Instructions? Here are the instructions, just as I received them from Washington. Biddle is to make his photographs very small. Too small to be seen with the naked eye. Why? Because we don't want foreign spies to be looking at them. Oh, there's nothing to worry about. The Marines have three officers and 82 men serving with a home squadron on the Pacific coast. <laughs> I declare, Broderick, for men who earn $6 a month, you're the cockiest bunch I ever saw. Now, there may be an attempt to steal the photographs that Mr. Biddle is going to make. You are to watch for and defeat any such attempt. Where will I meet Biddle? He'll uh, come this way en route to the Pacific coast. You will join him here. Right. Uh, one thing more. I have something here in my desk. I uh, told you the photographs would be too small to be seen by the human eye. Yes, now, here is a microscope for viewing the pictures. Microscope? For all its size, it is extremely powerful. It looks more like a piece of jewelry. It is. It's a ring, a finger ring. 
This is for you, Broderick. Wear it. Me? Wear a finger ring? You'll wear this one. And here is one for Joshua Biddle. He's to make his photographs to fit the viewer on the ring. I'll see that he gets it. Very well. And see that he gets complete instructions. And see that foreign spies do not get the photographs he makes. And I've got to hang around here waiting for that photographer to show up. <laughs> well, I might as well keep busy. You got any Indian trouble that needs cleaning up? <laughs> my, my men have been able to take care of the Indians in this vicinity. Oh. At the present time, we are quiet and peaceful. Just my luck. Unknown to Colonel Nelson and Broderick, a third ring for viewing tiny photographs had been sent out of a high official office in Washington. The Lone Ranger wore it when he rode into camp to join his faithful Indian companion, Toto. Oh, oh, boy. Tato noticed the ring immediately. You're not wearing when you leave camp. No, Tato. When I left here, I hoped to meet a special messenger from Washington who would give me instruction. You not meet him? Yes, I met him, but he had very little to say. Oh. Said our friend in Washington would appreciate it if we would keep an eye on Joshua Biddle to be sure he got to California safely. Then he gave me this ring and said that Biddle would know what it was for. Uh, uh you were going into Pineville. Uh, me go there. Did you learn when Biddle plans to leave for California? Him already on way west. He is? Isn't that right? Him start last night. Last night? That's right. And he's a long way west of here by now. We'll have to overtake him. Easy, steady, big fella. Easy, Scott. Easy, fella. One silver. Get him up, Scout. Jose Gonzalez and his sister had started planning as soon as they learned that Joshua Biddle was on his way to California. Their plan, when it was completed, was an elaborate one that involved the use of Chief White Eagle and the Indians of his village and the destruction of the tavern on the hilltop. My sister and I have worked out every detail. Now, Juan, it is up to you and Ricardo. What is to be done? I told you yesterday that my sister and I would go to California in place of this photographer and these daughters. See, you told us that. When those two come here, we will bid them welcome and persuade them to rest for a night before proceeding westward. While they are here, we take from the wagon all that we shall need. See, si, equipment for making the photographs, as well as documents to prove that we are authorized to make pictures of the defenses in California. Then kill the two. No, 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 Juan. You two will go to Chief White Eagle. Then what? White Eagle must attack this house. You have only to tell White Eagle that the wagon of the photographer... He's loaded with rifles for the soldiers. <laughs> now I understand, Jose. The Indians will lose no time in making an attack. You, Juan, and you, Ricardo. We'll offer to assist the Indians. See, si. You will see to it that the photographer and his girl are killed, that this building is burned to the ground, and that the wagon of the photographer also is destroyed by fire. But if the Indians think the wagon holds rifles, they would not destroy it. Juan, my brother said you would see that it is burned. Oh. Muy bien. We shall see that the wagon is close to the house, so it will catch fire. When it is learned that a man and woman perished in the flames, everyone will think that Nita and I were the victims. Jose, Jose, look out that window. Look on the trail to the east. Eh? A red wagon. It is coming this way. Good. It must be the one we are waiting for. It must be Biddle and his daughter. You, Juan, Ricardo, go and saddle your horses and be ready to ride. Si, Jose. As soon as we are sure the photographer will stay the night, you are to ride into the valley. You tell White Eagle where and how he can secure a supply of rifles to drive out of these hills the hated soldiers. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Thank <laughs> you.
to continue our story. It was after sunset when the big red wagon of Joshua Biddle and his daughter Flo approached the hilltop house. Neither the photographer nor his daughter suspected that two men who were saddling horses were preparing to ride into the western valley to start an Indian uprising. They saw the door swing open, and a good-looking man and a girl came from the building. There was nothing to indicate that these were dangerous foreign spies. Where's me, as amigos? There was no suspicion that the friendly greeting was an invitation to a death trap. Senor, I bid you welcome. Oh, 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 oh. My name is Senor Jose Gonzalez, and this is my sister, Juanita. Oh, buenos dias. Well, howdy. Downright glad to meet you, mister. And you too, miss. Yes, let me get down from this here seat. <laughs> I'll be proud to shake your hand. That there's my daughter, Flo. Me, I'm Joshua Biddle, as you can see by the right and on the side of my wagon. I heard Juan and Ricardo stood next to their horses a few yards distant, waiting to learn whether or not the photographer would spend the night in the hilltop house. You hear that, Nita? We are famous. <laughs> <laughs> Senorita, senor, we would be honored to serve. Oh, could you put us up for the night? For the night? See, si, see, si, of course. As he spoke, Jose turned and looked significantly at Juan and Ricardo. Juan nodded almost imperceptibly. Jose, show Senor Beetle where to put his wagon and horses in the rear of the building. See, si, see, si, Nita. Hey, you, Senorita, you come oh, into the house with me. It's been mighty dusty traveling. I'll see you inside, Dad. All right, honey. I'll be in just as soon as I put up the horses and wagon. Come on, Now I will show you where you may wash and refresh yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those two horsemen riding away there, they have been our guests for the past two days. Are they leaving for good? No, senorita. I think they will return. See, si. I think they will return. Juan and Ricardo reached the Indian village sometime after darkness had closed in. White Eagle, the chief, stood near the council fire and raised his hand in return to their gesture of friendship. White Eagle, this night the moon is full. It is a good moon for you and your people. For you. We come as friends to bring you welcome news. What news? We will tell you how you may become strong and great, more powerful than the headed soldiers of the government who live beyond the hills. Look, White Eagle, this is rifle. Hmm. Me buy, you sell? Uh, not this one, no. This rifle I will not sell. But I can tell you where there are others. Other gun? Enough so every warrior in your village will have one of his own. Your village will be stronger than the army. Where gun? First we must talk. You pay and we give information. Mm. Come, we talk. Juan knew how to talk to White Eagle and to trade what seemed to be priceless information for pelts. In the meantime, Jose and his sister were entertaining their guests in the tavern on the hilltop. The meal they served was accompanied by wine, which made Biddle and his daughter sleepy enough to retire soon after the meal was ended. Then Nita hurriedly packed the clothing she would carry with her, while her brother went through the photographer's wagon. Nita, are they asleep? Si, I think so. I have heard no sound from either room. How did you make out, Jose? Even better than I had hoped. See here. I found the old man's wallet and credentials in his wagon. Bueno. I have transferred his camera and film to our own small wagon. The horses are hitched and waiting. See, si. I am ready to leave whenever you give the word. Come, then. We shall get away from here at once. We must be through the valley before the Indians attack. Here! When Jose and his sister reached the bottom of the long hill in their wagon and started across the floor of the wide valley, they heard the distant chant of an Indian ceremonial. Yeah. And then a moment later, a horseman approached. In the moonlight, they recognized the man as Juan. Oh, 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 oh. Hola, Juan! You saw White Eagle? Si, si. Come on. Ricardo is at this moment with the Indians. They are aroused. They are ready to ride up the hill and attack the house and tear open the big wagon to get rifles like those of the army. I come here, I hope to meet you with the news. Bueno, you have done well, amigo. You will ride to the house with the Indians. Make sure that there is a fire. Then come to the coast and we meet you. Bring Ricardo with you. Si. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. Adios, amigo. White Eagle and his men were aroused to a high pitch of excitement by their war chant and dance. They leaped to the bare backs of their horses. 
flourished bows and arrows, then began the mad charge that would carry them across the valley and up the long hill to the rambling house where Joshua and Flo were sleeping. Meanwhile, the Lone Ranger and Tonto reached the tavern and halted their horses beside the photographer's wagon. Oh, 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 he's, 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 here, fella. Fella. he's here, Tonto. Uh, that good. We'll go inside and talk to him. We'll soon find... Tonto, you hear Indians? Ah. Uh, Those yells, they sound like war cries. I wonder if White Eagle's tribe has broken loose. Look, Kimasabi, over yonder in valley. We see plenty Indian in moonlight. Yes, heading this way. I'll rouse the people inside. You keep an eye on the Indians. Yeah, me do it. It took but a moment for the Lone Ranger to rouse Joshua Biddle, who in turn called Flo. While the girl dressed, the masked man and Biddle went through the tavern and learned to their surprise that there was no one else around. Here's Flo. Dad, Dad, where are those others, Jose and Nita? We don't know. They're not here. We're the only ones in this building. Well, where did they go? Kimasabi. Yes, Tonto. Hi, Tonto. What's going on outside? Indians coming uphill. Plenty fast. Are they coming here? They must be. We'll get away from them by riding east. Well, that's not good. Why not? Indians come up east hill. Come from both sides. You mean we're surrounded? That's right. How many Indians? Maybe hundred, maybe more. A hundred? We'll have to prepare for a stand. Go through this place. Get together any firearms you can find. I've got a couple of rifles in my wagon. All right, get them. The Indians will be here in a couple of minutes. Before the Indians came close enough to use their bows and arrows with effect, the rifles and six guns in Hilltop House spoke out. The Indians halted, dismounted, then advanced more slowly, hugging the ground. Well, they'll wait until they're near enough to use fire arrows. You mean they'll set fire to the building? Yes. We can hold out for a time, but not for long. Hey! I got one that was creeping close. I thought there was an army post near here. Beyond the western hill. Too far for them to hear the gunfire. Maybe one of us can get to that post for help. I'd be willing to try riding through that pack of crawling redskins. If there were the slightest hope of getting through, I'd try it myself. Maybe I could make it in my wagon. The Redskins don't have rifles, and their arrows wouldn't go through the wagon. It would bring down your horses. Oh, that's so. Of course, the wagon could coast downhill, but going up the other side... Wait, wait a minute. Biddle, you're giving me an idea. Come with me out the back way. Flo, you stay here and keep firing. Right. Come on, Tonto. Uh, me Tonto, give up some gunfire. Uh, me do it. Biddle, are you sure this wagon will keep our arrows? You bet it will. That wagon was built for a circus. It was used to house wild animals and once in a while to hold horses. As a matter of fact, the iron staples and braces are still in place. Good. I'll need those braces to tie silver. Open the rear and drop the ramp. You're going to put your horse inside the wagon? Yes. We'll have to move out a lot of my trunks and boxes to make room. Come on, then. We'll have to work fast. Working with feverish speed, the wagon was empty to fiddles, chests, cases, and assorted equipment. In his haste, the photographer didn't notice that his camera case was empty. As soon as there was room, Silver was led into the wagon and securely tied to the high wooden sides so he would not be jostled. Then the tailgate was closed. The wagon was jockeyed to the right position. The front wheels were lashed so it would travel in a straight line. All right, now give it a shove and get it started down the hill. As the wagon started down the hill, the masked man leaped aboard. The heavy wagon gained speed rapidly as it rolled downhill. Several of the creeping Indians had to scramble to the side to avoid being run down. Others fired their arrows, but the board sides of the wagon furnished ample protection for the Lone Ranger's great horse, Silver. White Eagle believed that the rifles he sought were in the wagon. He shouted to his men. Ricardo and Juan leaped to their feet as the Indians turned to follow the wagon downhill. The Indians think that the wagon holds rifles, and it is the rifles they want. Wait! Wait! White Eagle, call your men back! Indian want gun in wagon? No, no! The house! Attack the house! They must kill those two inside and burn the house. Everything depends on that. Call them back! Call them back, White Eagle! Listen to me! The rifles are in the house! By the time the Indians had regained their horses, the wagon was far downhill. It reached the bottom and slowed as it rolled across the level valley. Then the masked man dropped the tailgate. All right, we're past the Indian silver. Come on, boy. Easy. Right, easy. Now we'll give those redskins a run. Steady, big foot. One, two, three. Two men were stationed as guards near the army post. Joe, look to the east. A horseman, traveling mighty fast. Think we'd better call a corporal? We'd better wait to see who's coming. 
Hey, he's masked. You sure? Dead sure. See for yourself. The moonlight's full on his face. Hold on, hold on. Stop right there, mister. We got you covered. Dismount and take off that mask. Then identify yourself. There's no time to argue. White Eagle's Indians are on the warpath. White Eagle? Warpath? Yes. They're attacking Hilltop House. Stay right there. You keep him covered, Joe. I'll tell the colonel. And tell that Marine named Broderick. He's been spoiling for a fight. heard what I said, Broderick. We're going after Indians. Help me in. All right, men. Follow me. With the colonel and the Lone Ranger leading the way, the troopers came over the hill and across the valley. The Indians were milling about the big red wagon, shouting angrily at their leader. There was little fighting. The Indians were quickly rounded up, and then a detachment of troopers moved on to collect the Indians on the far side of Hilltop House. It was half an hour later when the Lone Ranger joined Toto, the photographer, and Biddle's daughter in the tavern. Thunderation, but I'm glad to see you back. You know, it was the strangest thing. When you started downhill with my big wagon, the Redskins seemed to lose all interest in this here place. They went after the wagon. They were after rifles, Joshua. Rifles? Yes. Two white men had told White Eagle your wagon was full of rifles. Where'd they get such an idea as that? Well, who were the men? I don't know. And we may never find out. You see, the Indians killed both of them for lying about the rifles. Well, that's downright curious. Oh, there's another thing, Biddle. I want to know the meaning of this ring here. Oh, isn't it good looking? It's more than that. It has a definite purpose in connection with your assignment on the West Coast. I never saw the like of it. I was informed you could tell me what it's for. Mister, I'd sure be glad to tell you if I knew. But I don't know any more about that ring than you do. There are surprises for the Lone Ranger when he learns more about the ring and meets the hard-boiled Marine named Broderick. Listen to the next adventure. is a feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, created and produced by George W. Trendle and directed by Charles D. Livingston. Tonight's story was written by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. (laughs) 